Hello, my name is Andrew Bertino and I am a senior at Florida State University majoring in Information Technology. I am a leader who specializes in web design, usability, and project management. I enjoy leading and working with teams. My strong management skills, my excellent verbal and written communication skills, and my relentless work ethic set me apart from other IT professionals. Working with web design, I have seen the increase in demand for servers. A good way to learn how to set up a server is to first install it as a virtual machine. I choose to do this tutorial because I enjoy working with virtual machines. I feel they give you a lot of freedom to test, experiment, and learn, all without having to worry about affecting the host machine. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create and configure a Windows Server 2003 virtual machine using a Windows host machine. First, I will show you how to create the virtual machine using VMware. From there, I will demonstrate how to configure some of the settings. Finally, I will show you how to activate and interact with the virtual machine. In this tutorial, I will not be showing you how to install Windows Server 2003. I will be merely demonstrating how to prepare the virtual machine for the install. This tutorial was mostly for web developers, system administrators, and tech enthusiasts. I am assuming that you have a good amount of technical knowledge. As such, this tutorial may be too advanced for some viewers. For this tutorial, you will need to have the following. First, you will need to have VMware Workstation installed. I am using version 6.0. You also need to have either a 32 or 64 bit copy of Windows Server 2003. If you are using a 64 bit copy, you will need to download the processor check for 64 bit compatibility on VMware's website. This will check to see if your processor is capable of running a 64 bit guest OS. Also, you will need to have at least 8 gigabytes of free hard drive space. Finally, the computer you are using will need to be running a Windows operating system. Alright, first, go ahead and open up VMware. VMware should start on the Home tab, but if it doesn't, select the Home tab from the top. From there, you will want to click this link here that says New Virtual Machine. This will cause the Virtual Machine Wizard to start up. Click Next to continue. The first screen will ask you to select an appropriate configuration. For this tutorial, all you need is the typical devices. So make sure Typical is selected and then click Next. The next screen will ask you to choose a guest operating system. Under the guest operating system list, select Microsoft Windows. Under the drop down list, you need to select the version of Windows you are going to use. If you have a 32-bit version of Windows Server 2003, you'll need to choose from either Web, Standard, Enterprise, or Small Business. If you have a 64-bit version, you can choose from either Standard or Enterprise. Once you have chosen your version, click Next to continue. Now, you have to give the virtual machine a name. You can leave it as the default name or change it to whatever you would like. Then, you have to choose a location for your virtual machine. If you can, try to put the virtual machine on a separate physical hard drive. Separate partitions do not count. Putting it on a separate hard drive will increase performance as your guest OS will not have to fight with your host OS for disk access. Once you complete those, click Next. Next, we have to choose the networking type. This all depends on what you would like to do. I usually select Use Bridge Networking. However, if the host machine is not connected to a network, then you should select Use Network Address Translation NAT. If you need the guest operating system to have its own internet connection, select Use Host Only Networking. But you should be aware that you will have to install modem or ethernet drivers yourself. Choose the networking type you want and click Next. Now, we have to choose the size of the virtual hard drive. By default, it is set to 8 gigabytes. Go ahead and choose your hard drive size, but I recommend keeping it at or above 8 gigabytes. Now you have to choose if you want to allocate all of the space now. If you choose to do it now, it will take longer to set up the virtual hard drive. You will also need to have the free space on your real hard drive to fit the size that you set. If you choose to allocate it now, it will enhance the performance of the virtual machine. If you leave it unchecked, the virtual hard drive image will just resize as you install programs. You can ignore this split the disk into two gigabyte files. Once you have completed those, click finish. You should then get a screen saying that the virtual machine has been created successfully. You can go ahead and click close. Now that you have created a virtual machine, at the top there will be a new tab for that virtual machine based on the name you set from earlier. Now we have to edit some of the configuration settings. Under commands, Click the link that says Edit Virtual Machine Settings. This will bring up the Settings panel. 
we have to set the amount of memory you want the virtual machine to have. Memory is selected by default when you load the settings window. On the right is the panel that will let you change the amount of memory. You have a few choices here. It is automatically set to the recommended memory setting, which should be 384 megabytes. The guest OS recommends at least 128 megabytes. You can set it to whatever you would like, but I recommend at least using 384 megabytes if you have the memory space available. Now, select TD-ROM from the device list on the left. Under connection, you have a few options. If you're using a physical CD copy of Windows Server 2003, I recommend selecting the drive letter for your CD-ROM under Use Physical Drive, like so. If you are using an ISO image, which is simply a compiled copy of the CD stored in your hard drive, select Use ISO Image. Then, browse your computer until you find the ISO image. Feel free to browse the rest of the settings, but you do not have to change any of them for this tutorial. Once you are done with the settings screen, click OK. Now that we have created and configured the virtual machine, you can finally install Windows Server 2003. As mentioned earlier, I will not walk you through the installation process, but I will show you how to start and interact with the virtual machine. First, under Commands, click a link that says Start This Virtual Machine. When you click Start, you may get a message about your host not having synchronized TSCs, or timestamp counters. You can read the Knowledge Base article if you'd like, but for this tutorial, you can go ahead and click OK and skip that for now. The virtual machine will then start up. Depending on what you chose, it will either read from the physical CD or the ISO image on your hard drive. After it boots, the Windows installation will begin. First, you must activate the virtual machine. To do so, click anywhere on the virtual machine's window. Now, you can interact with the virtual machine. If you need to get back to VMware and your host machine, click Control and then the Alt key. This completes the tutorial, as I will not walk you through the actual install. However, installing the OS to the virtual machine is no different than if you were installing it to an actual physical host machine. As such, there are many tutorials online that should help you out with the installation process. Hopefully, everything went as planned and you were able to successfully create the virtual machine. In this tutorial, I showed you how to create and configure a Windows Server 2003 virtual machine. I also demonstrated how to start and interact with the virtual machine. I hope that you were able to pick up many helpful tips along the way. Thank you for watching my tutorial.